Hey, hey everybody, this is Larry, this is June 14, kind of. I say kind of because it is like 1 a.m. Uh, I, I, I just been recovering from having a long run. You could watch the other video for that. Uh, but yeah, apparently there's a new medium problem that just came out, so let's take a look at that one. Um, I was going to break it down, but hit the like button. Oh, it's an SQL problem. All right, but let's not do that today. Uh, all right, maybe I should do it this way. Then. Maybe that's why I haven't seen it. Uh, Oh yeah, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this one. So yeah, we have combination. Wait, no. Oh, I want it sort the other way just so that I, I feel like the newer prompts are a little bit more interesting. Though I should go back and solve the other ones. But yeah, um, hope everyone's doing all right. Today we have 2992, 2992, number of self-divisible permutations. Uh, given an integer n, we turn the number of permutations over the one index the way nums one to n such that is self-divisible. A one index array of a of length n is self-divisible for if for man I'm so if is self-divisible if for every one is less than you go to i less than you go to n uh, gcd sub a sub i and i is you go to one. Is this a one index? It is one index. So okay so. One one two. Oh no, this is just the permutation. That's not the thing. Okay, fine. One two and one. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, my 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 reaction is because I was like, hmm, th this is this. I don't know that I had any uh, strict ideas about it. Um, but the first thing I looked at was the constraint. I have to look looking for the after I understand the problem the first thing that I look for was constraint and I saw n is equal to 12 and I'm like okay all right <laughs> so you can brute force this is the point um well with memorization um this is where you use something called bit mask dynamic programming I know that people talk about it a lot but we'll go over it um so th this one maybe I'll go over it a little bit um because this is a premium video and I think for the premium I don't go over it too much in depth because I think the people who have premium don't really, uh, yeah. But the idea here is that, um, okay, so let's say we want to write it in a brute force way, how would you do it, right? So the idea here is maybe you have a, and and uh, naming things is hard, so all right, let's just say cap, right? Uh, I guess that makes sense for this one. And I, I like my ends to be big, so I just always change it, right? So then now here, maybe you have a scene array, um, and here, let's just be clear, scene is you go to um a boolean array where um i don't know scene of i i means uh i is is uh, let's just we used is a better word perhaps right means that um i is used right um and then another thing is index so uh index is just um more self-explanatory, maybe, I don't know, the current index that we're trying to fill, right? So, okay, so then let's say we have this, and then now um, if index is equal to n, then we're done. Um, I'm, hmm, maybe n plus 1, maybe we'll just start one index, fine, right? Um, then we're done, so we can return 1, that means that everything is filled and everything is used for us to be able to get to index minus 1, because um, smaller than that, it will never get there, right? And then, um, so if we have a total for count, we return total. Um, I guess 12 factorial doesn't need a mod. Because I was like, oh, probably need a mod, but I guess 12 factorial is small enough. 12 factorial is in fact 479 million. Hmm, I used to remember that number, but for some reason I just couldn't. Hmm, it is what it is. But yeah, um, so it is small enough, but obviously it is also not small enough that you can just literally brute force, right? Um, but yeah, and then the idea here is that, okay, now we brute, we, we brute force, eh, I don't know, let's just not say brute force, let's just say try every possibility for index, right? Yeah, for, for filling out the permutation index. Um, so then now we have four 
um, let's just say i or x in range of from 1 to n inclusive, right? And if not used, meaning we just haven't used it before, and um, and this, whatever the rule is, GCD of x and index is equal to 1, then that means that we can use it, so then we would do something like used of x is equal to true. Um, of course, this is backtracking, so we, we can maybe do something like this. I don't know, maybe... Maybe it's fine either way, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, maybe you could make a copy, right? And then this is used, and then index plus one, right? And that's pretty much it, right? This is how you would do a normal backtracking. I'm not going, I'm not doing this part in that much detail. Um, it, you really should, um, You really should uh, be familiar with this part, right? Just this is backtracking. Um, yeah, I'm gonna run it for one, two, and three, and it looks really Gucci, right? But of course, as soon as you five should be good, eight should be good. Maybe it's getting close. Let's just run it real quick. I just want to see it, right? Um, but then if you try twelve, all of a sudden, oh, it's still fast enough. That is actually surprising. So let me just yolo submit then. <laughs> I actually thought that that might not be fast enough. Okay, so this is obviously a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this is actually. I, I don't know. Okay, so apparently you could just do backtracking for this one, but I am still gonna let's just go over bit mass dynamic programming, right? The idea here is, um, well, the idea we we basically already wrote the bit mass dynamic programming, even though it doesn't show it that way, right? The idea here is that while well, used is a boolean array, can we represent um, use can uh, an observation is that use can can only have twelve items. Um, so used in a way is going to look like this, right? Maybe it has like true, false, true, true, false. I don't know. I'm just banging randomly, right? And then here you can see that uh, if you want to condense it a little bit, uh, then you could rewrite this as tf ttft, right? And then maybe if you want to think about it that way, then you just say, oh, true is one and false is zero. Then you have, you can write it as this and as an array maybe. But then another thing you notice is that, oh, this can actually be a binary number, right? So this is actually just, I mean, I don't know what the binary number is. <laughs> uh, I don't, I'm going to try to Google it. To, I don't have a calculator for it. All right, 45, right? Oops. So that, so this is 45. So this is how, how, how you would convert a boolean array into one number. And that's basically what bit mass dynamic programming is. Um, I mean, I think people make a big deal out of it, um, especially when you're not familiar. But every syntax is, is pretty much that, right? Because basically uh, not used so another way to write this, if if used was a bit mask, is just writing um, I don't know something like do 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 if if this is zero, um, then then this this is this statement is just a bit mask version of not used because this is basically saying um, and all these numbers you know bitwise operations you can look at them one bit at a time. And you can just think about this as if uh, this shift just means looking at the x bit and whether that bit is a true or false. Um, so if it's zero, that means it's a false. If it's not zero, that means it's a true. And that's why this is not used, right? Or, you know, this is the thing. And then here, this one is just setting it to true. You could do it in a number of ways, but knowing that it is not true, you can just do this. Uh, an or statement, right? That basically flips to bit. We already know that this is already a zero, so this or statement would flip it to a true. Um, and here you can also, I mean, technically you don't even need this because you would write it in a different way, but you would also just flip it off. Um, but this assumes that this is true. Uh, I guess this you may write it this way to actually set it, but um, but this is the idea behind it. And here, assuming that that bit is uh, false. Oh, sorry, it's true, and you want to set it to false. 
um, you can do something like this be, to flip it that way. You can also do something like, um, yeah, something like this, which is also fine, right? Um, and if that doesn't make sense to you, you should just, you know, look up how bit, bit, um, bit operations work. And that's how you basically put together a, a bit mass dynamic programming. If we now write this as, okay, this is now a zero, right? Uh, and now used is now a bit mask, right? So then now instead of writing if this thing, we can just write if do, 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 right? And you see the x index is equal to one, right? Pretty much line for line, copy and paste really. Uh, use is equal to true. I mean, here we don't have to write it this way. The way that I usually write it is that I could write it here um, because this just creates a new variable anyway. And but a new variable is an int, right? So you don't have to copy the entire array. Or in fact, you are copying the entire array and creating a new one, but it's only an integer, so it's very fast. And that's how people write it this way. And yeah, and you can see that it, it works. Let's give it a submit, right? I actually don't know why this is slower. Uh, that's kind of, hmm, why is that so? Is Let me try it again. I, I don't know if it's just like leak code being weird or maybe, huh, hmm. Am I doing something funky? I don't know. But uh, but yeah, but then here, well, I mean, I know that I didn't memorize it yet because I, I just wanted to, I mean, I knew that this was going to pass, so I, I thought to not memorize it. But yeah, in any case, you can see that this works, right? Um, hmm. I don't know why this is a little bit slow, to be honest. It should be relatively on the same scale. But yeah, but the point is that now used is a bit mask. But but the thing is that now you are a, because it is a bit mask, it is easier to use memorization because it's just easier to memorize a number versus memorizing an array, right? I mean, you could do it, but but then now you're like converting back and forth and all these things um, and making sure that it's um, immutable and stuff like that is always an issue. Um, so here, and I'm just lazy today, so you can just write cache, right? Uh, and then now you get, da, 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 and then, yeah, you can see that this, uh, just adding memorization, um, making a bit mass dynamic programming, if you will, or bit mass memorization. I don't think we'll call it that though. Uh, you can see that this is slow. Uh, and then, and the, the ultimate, um, Yeah, the ultimate thing is that, um, well, uh, what I was going to say was that, the ultimate th I mean, this is already fast enough, so it doesn't matter. But the ultimate thing is noticing that there are only 12 inputs. So you can actually just put it in an array. And you could even be very lazy about it. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit lazy about it, so uh, uh, I'm just going to say something like, I'll just put it here, right? For... Um, hmm... How do I want to write it? Uh, hmm. I didn't write it in a way you could. I mean, if, I, if, I, if this was countdown, then it, it, this is actually easier to write. But, uh, but I didn't write it that way. So, eh. But in any case, you can maybe write something like um, uh, 1 to 12, right? Um, print. Or may, maybe you have an array. And then array dot appends solution I think you have to do it this way I, 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 I don't know oops all right so maybe th that'll allow you to run it and I uh, oh maybe I have to be after the decoration. I don't know how lead code works, but, it's, eh, but it works very weirdly, right? So then now you have this output, right? So then now you can just say array is equal to this, and then just return uh, array of n minus one, because I have, yeah, I, I have it in zero index, right? So then now you can write it this way, right? And now you can delete this. Um, did I mess it up? 
zero one two three four. Oh, I see. Because this this uh, was not inclusive because I'm sloppy. Um, oh, I mean, I, I, I yeah, okay, fine. Yeah. Oh. Oh wait. Uh, okay, fine. <laughs> I'm being a little bit silly, but uh, but you get the idea anyway. Uh, okay, there we go. Now you have this, and then now you could do this, and then now you get rid of this. Yeah. Yeah, and basically much faster. Uh, well, actually it doesn't show up here, but um, it depends on the number of inputs, so I guess I don't know. But it, it's another idea to consider. It's just literal uh, printing it out. But yeah, um, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope this is a good intro to Bitmass Dynamic Programming. And yeah, stay good, stay healthy to your mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.